Hello everyone. I just want to do a quick video to discuss how the piston works in your motorcycle engine. So specifically I'm going to talk about how the piston works in a four-stroke engine. There is actually slight differences between how the uh, piston works in a two-stroke engine and a four-stroke engine. Uh, so I'm just going to focus on how it works in the four-stroke engine. But essentially the difference is in the, how the rings in the, the piston rings work on the piston. Uh, that's the difference between a two-stroke and a four-stroke engine. So on a four-stroke engine, okay, let's talk about what is the role of the piston. So the role of the piston, which as you can see here, you can see the top of the piston. Let me move it back up to the very top. So the role of the piston, this is with the head of the cylinder removed, the role of the piston is to transfer motion in the engine. So when the piston is at the top of its stroke, okay, so it's at the top of the cylinder as it is here, when the combustion gases which are compressed at the top just above the cylinder, between the cylinder head and the piston. When the combustion gases um, are ignited with the spark plug, it causes a burn. So that burn causes the exhaust or the combustion gases to expand due to the heat. And that heat pushes down on the piston. Okay? So the piston is connected to the crankshaft through a connecting rod. So the pressure is forced downwards on the piston, which causes the piston to move downwards. Okay? And the piston moving down causes the connecting rod to move downwards, which acts on the crankshaft and causes the crankshaft to rotate. Now the crankshaft is connected to the, tr to the transmission through gears, uh, and that's how we get motion in at the back wheel of our motorcycle. So the piston is essentially there to transmit that motion from the combustion gases as they burn. Okay. It also has the role of compressing the combustion gases before they are ignited. Okay. So let's take off the the cylinder itself. Okay. So the piston spends its life sitting in the cylinder of the engine. And maybe before I take it off, let's just turn this engine over slightly, just so you can see. Okay. Hopefully you can see that easy, easily enough there. Oop. I've got oil spilling out, so let me just turn it like that. So I want to just show you how, I'm just going to bring it down to the bottom of its stroke. So it's sitting in the bottom of the cylinder. And I think you can see here, there's a lot of shadows I'm afraid, but you can see there that it sits, it's a perfect fit for the cylinder, or almost a perfect fit for the cylinder. Okay, so if I take off the cylinder, we can see. Get in more detail. Okay, so it's a really tight fit. That's the cylinder. Okay. There it is there. So it's just made from steel. The piston itself is made from steel, maybe a steel alloy. Okay, so it's going to be a perfect fit. It's just a hollow cylinder, essentially that the piston spends its life moving up and down in. Now, on the piston there is a number of rings, okay, so you can see them here. So there's a series of rings and they play an important role in the... in how the piston works. But before we look at the piston rings. Let's just take a look at the piston itself. So this particular piston is, a 100, is, on a, is in a 150cc motorcycle engine. It's 
connected to the connecting rod, okay, and it's held onto the connecting rod through a little pin, okay. So I can't take it off too easily. I'm just going to leave that in place. But I do have this little small, smaller piston here. So this is just off a 50cc motorcycle engine. And hopefully you'll be able to see this clearly. It'll stay in focus. Okay. So that's the piston. Now I have the little pin in the mid stuck in the middle of it. So let me just remove that pin. Okay. So you can see straight through. So with the pin removed, you can see inside the piston. And inside the piston, we it's basically hollow. So it's basically all metal. Uh, again, inside it's, it's hollow. The little pin, here's the little pin. Okay. And the little pin fits, slots in, like so. It's a tight fit, but essentially it should go in, okay. So that's it. So you can see it there now. So the pin slots in, as you can see. So it slots in like that. And it's held in place by these little spring clips. So there's the little spring clips. So hopefully you can see that in focus. So these little clips, the clips fit into here and they hold the pin in place and then the, the piston is connected to the connecting rod. So the connecting rod itself is made of metal also. So with the pin off, we can also see on the piston that there is a number of seats. Okay, so there are the grooves here. So these grooves are where the piston rings sit. So these are the seats for the piston rings. And you can also see that there's a number of little perforated holes in the piston. And these little perforated holes are to allow the oil to circulate or pass through the um, ring, the oil ring and the piston itself and to keep the whole thing lubricated. Now, the piston, let's go back here, let's see where we are with a zoom. So the piston has a number of rings on it, okay? So there's actually three rings here. So the first two rings are called the compression rings and their role is essentially to ensure that the combustion gases that are sitting up here in the cylinder of the engine do not get past the piston and down into the crankcase. So these compression rings are basically there to ensure that the gases above the piston are held in compression. So compression is important because if there's no if compression is not held above the piston, then the expanding gases will not be able to put enough pressure on the piston to force it downwards and to drive the crankshaft. So generally you will see two compression rings, so one and two, and you can see that they sit into the just go back to one a little piston here, get it into focus, okay, so you can see that there is two seats at the top and that's where the compression rings sit. Now where the little holes are, or the little perforations in the piston, there is similar perforations in the larger piston and you can also see that they correspond with the seat at the bottom of the piston, so the bottom seat, so just here basically, just just there, okay? You can see where the little perforations are in the, the bottom seat. It's slightly wider, that seat, than the top two seats for the which hold the compression rings. So 
in the bottom in the bottom um, seat of the piston you will find the oil ring okay so the oil ring is the bottom ring in this piston here and the oil ring has the job of ensuring that the oil which is in the crankshaft and which is getting possibly um, pumped around the motorcycle and possibly being pumped and squirted out onto the bottom of the piston possibly underneath the piston here so the, the role of the oil ring is to ensure that the oil which is lubricating the cylinder and the piston the connecting rod and the pin that it rotates on and the rest of the motorcycle engine that that oil is not getting pa going upwards past the piston so the oil should not be coming up past the top of the piston the head of the piston and it should not be getting into the cylinder and mixing with the um, combustion gases so let me just show you so for this small demo piston that I have I also have some rings to accompany it okay so let's take a look at the rings so here we have the two compression rings okay so there's our two sorry there's our two compression rings so hopefully you can see them there so there's just two of them and if you take a look at just let's just take a look at one at a time if you take a look at this compression ring you will notice that there is a gap up the top okay and there is a gap on, on all um, piston rings and that gap there is to allow the piston ring to expand like that okay and it has to expand so that when we want to seat it on the actual piston let's just see can we get that in focus we have to slip it over the piston because it's a really tight fit now generally you will use a, a piston ring fitter so there is a special tool which is used to expand the piston ring slightly and then get it onto the piston okay so there will be a gap in every piston ring there is a little gap okay and that little gap is going to allow exhaust gases or combustion gases to actually pass by it at that particular point in the gap okay so the, the, the piston rings provide a seal okay so that's their role the piston rings are there to provide a seal to ensure that the combustion gases are not getting down and that the oil is not coming up past the piston so they form a perfect seal or almost a perfect seal between the piston and the cylinder of the engine okay so when the when two when two comp compression rings are fitted on the on the piston okay you want to make sure that the two of them are not seated so on the piston with the gaps on the piston rings in the same place so they should be rotated relative to each other okay so they will be rotated relative to each other possibly at 180 degrees and that just ensures that when the two rings combined that they close that little gap okay so there's the looking at the two rings like that you can see that you don't see any gap there so that's why there's two compression rings now the oil ring which I have an example of here so here's the oil ring okay so you're looking at this and you're thinking this oil ring um, does not look like an oil does not look like a ring it looks like a number of rings and that's because that is true so the oil ring is actually composed of three rings okay in the middle there is a little spacer and then there is two little two two rings that look a little bit like the compression rings they're like very thin compression rings they like the compression rings only a lot thinner and in the middle of the two compression of the sorry the two rails these are called so in the middle of the two rails we have this little spacer ring okay and it's a funny design so those 
those two rings here. The rails are just little plain rings. But the spacer is a funny sort of a... Hopefully I can get this in focus. Bring my finger up to get it in focus. Okay, so there it is. That's the spacer ring. So as you can see, it's a funny sort of a shape. And it's that shape by design. It combined, the spacer ring combined with the two rail rings form one ring called the oil ring. And again, their role is to prevent the oil coming up from the engine and getting up into the cylinder. Now, the other role of the rings, the rings actually uh, also play a role in transferring heat. So, essentially, as the combustion gases are burnt, they create a huge amount of heat in the cylinder of the engine. <clears throat> so part of that heat that's created goes out with the exhaust gases after they're burnt, but a lot of that heat is actually absorbed by the piston itself because metal is quite a good conductor of heat and up to about 30% of that heat that is absorbed by the piston is dissipated away through the rings. Okay, so about 30%. So the rings also play an important role in dissipating heat from the exhaust or from the combustion in the cylinder of the engine. So that is another role of the piston rings. And that's it. That's essentially how a piston works. You will notice that there is little grooves in the top in the head of the piston. Little funny grooves. And these little grooves are there by design as well. Um, they help with the uh, proper circulation of the combustion gases during compression. So when the gases are being compressed, when the, when the piston is moving up and it's compressing, so the piston is moving up, let's see. Let's move it down. So the piston is moving up. It's compressing the combustion gases in the cylinder okay which has been removed and what it does is it causes the gases to circulate so the gases circulate and it kind of causes the gases to circulate and pressurize at the point where the spark comes from the spark plug okay now what you just lastly what you're going to notice is that on the piston itself on one of the grooves, let's just see if we can see it here, bring up my hand, just get it back in focus. So if we look here, we can see on one side of the piston in the groove we can see in. And on the other side we can see it's blank. So the in is a marker, okay? So it indicates that this this side of the piston should be where the should be on the side where the input port where the combustion gases are coming in. Okay, and that's it. That's how a piston works. Very simple, but it works very well. Its design has not changed for many years, and it is used in motorcycle engines around the world. Okay, okay, everyone, hopefully you, found, you got something from this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.